Welcome to the studio. I'm DJ Bitbender and today we're going to be taking a look at this sampler 101. Let's talk about that sampler interface and some of the things you might have omitted while just trying to, you know, use the sampler environment. We're going to actually dive deeper into that particular interface and I'll show you some of the things that will actually make your workflow a lot easier and, you know, get clean recording into your Akai MPC device from any other external device out there. So let's go. Welcome back. Let's dive straight into the sample environment. You can do that by either clicking on your menu, then hitting the sampler if you're the straight up type, or basically if you're in the main menu, plus part nine, takes you straight into the sampler, or you can double click this mix right here for those of you using, I think the, touch, the MPC Live and the Live 2. Double tap takes you straight into the sample environment. And once you're here, basically what you see is um, the important things first. Let's go, let's start from that. We're talking about your input. We're talking about, uh, which is kind of like maybe one or two, three, four, and then maybe you want to use your uh, uh, resampler, you want to resample to left or right or one or two, three, four. Now, then we're talking about also the stereo. That is the mode. Are you using stereo mode or the mono? Then insert for those who want to basically insert um, effect and apply it while they are recording. That one is there. And then we have this meter right here. Double tapping on it actually shows you in detail what this is about. We're going to talk about this that a lot of people mistake for um, kind of like an impute, like a level controller. But we're going to talk about this in detail later. So now, um, while we're here, the essence of the sampler is so that it allows you to take in input, right, from any external device straight into your Akai MPC. There are basically, uh, I think we've done a video on this before when we talked about how we were able to route in audio into this device. But during that time, or as of then, we've not had any um, possibility of being able to connect a sound card directly to the Akai MPC devices. So what we're doing then is we'll connect the, uh, uh, our own device, that is the cable, to the left and the right of the, at the back of the, where you have the record. we we'll connect the cable there, and then from there, we will now connect it to the device. But that one has been phased out now, since we are able to connect the Akai MPC directly to a sound card. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. This particular USB device connects the archive straight to a sound card, and from the sound card, I can basically just plug in my line out, uh, you know, like all those TSR cable. I can plug it into my mic input and select line, then connect it to my phone, which is basically kind of like what I've done here. We're going to show you with this. Connected my phone and straight into the sound card, and then uh, before I, I proceed, I need to show you how I was able to select the sound card. I'm sure some of you are already familiar with this. If you come to your menu and you go to your settings on the audio device here, the audio device, you can actually select. This is where I selected the audio device I am using. is the Behringer UMC444. So if you want to use internal, you can switch back to internal. If you want to use the external, you have to come here and select it first. That is when it will now route all your input and your outputs to your sound card. Now, let's come back to the sampler, right? So here right now, I plugged in cable that I'm using. Let me show you. Let me take it off from the device and show you. So the cable I am using to actually send in the audio has two of this TSR to one of the normal jack. I think this is the color maybe like three equal or three mm. But this is the two TSR to this small one. So I connect this to the phone and then this goes into the in, the input one and input two of the microphone uh, input on the sound card. So input one and input two. You can actually plug it in and take in your audio mono mode 
if you basically want. But for me, when I connect it to the one and two, and I send the two to the Akai MPC, it allows me to actually be able to adjust both the left and the right. You know, it gives me like that stereo feeling when I'm trying to record. Um, anyways, so let's just talk about this interface again in a very short bit. You have some of the things here that will actually make your work a lot easier if you are able to use it how it should be. I notice that a lot of the time, the problem with most of um, users is when they see how someone else is using the device, they tend to want to follow suit in that particular direction without trying to also explore either on their own or trying to read books, read manuals to understand or watch these kind of videos to understand how these things should be used. So, and if you do that, you are limited to just only a few of the features or the knowledge. But if you explore more, you watch videos, you, see, you know, tutorials and read books on how that device or the interface should actually be used, it will be a lot more power in your hand to do things. And that's basically why we are here. We show you how this device is actually supposed to be used. And don't forget, if you like what you're hearing, you like what basically some of the videos we've thrown out here, kindly um, you know, subscribe and also like and share. Now, so there's something we actually call, you know, the sound to noise ratio, where some, uh, I think some other people call it signal to noise ratio. If you understand the concept of signal to, to noise ratio or the sound to noise, you know, basically where you're trying to separate your sound that you need from the noise in itself. If you understand the con that concept, you, you will agree that it is better for you when you are trying to send in any sound or any signal into your Akai MPC, get the cleanest and the loudest possible audio or signal from the device you are sending it from. Now, you know, earlier, you know, I showed you the cable that I am using, which is like this cable connected to this phone, and that's where we're going to be taking our audio from. And at the same time, this device in itself, Akai, has a little, either you like it or not, a reasonable amount of, uh, of noise that is transmitting with your device. Anytime you are trying to like, you know, send your signal, there is, it might be minimal, it might not really disturb you, but the more you increase the input of, that is, this particular device to bring, to, you know, to, the more you open it up for audio to come in or for signal to come in, the more noise also comes in with it. So we advise, oh, let your noise be low when you are trying to send in the signal. And how can you do that? It's by ensuring a loud volume of the signal comes in first. So if that loud volume of signal comes in, that way it will be easier for you to manage because you would not really need to do much here to capture a clean audio. You will not need to actually nudge up any of your... Uh, your your sound and all that to get a very clean audio. I'm talking to maybe like your your gain and all that on your sound card and at the same time this particular meter here. This level. Now what this level does now like I said earlier this is waiting for signal right now. I'm gonna play something on my phone and I will show you this is the phone I actually sampled from anyway. I will show you how that can actually you know, it's waiting for, for signal, right? But when we hit play, if I put the signal here, if I set this level here, what you are doing is you are actually adjusting the, you know, the threshold. You are saying the only time you can start recording is when, let me show you again. The only time you can start recording is when the input is minus 2.76 decibel. If I take it down, I'm saying, maybe like I put it here now. What I'm saying is the only time you should start recording is if the input is greater than minus 20 decibel. So that is what you are doing as, you know, kind of like your threshold. It also helps if you are trying to say, you know what, um, get me a very clear audio, as clear as possible. But because I know that this is the noise level in the room, so you don't need to record anything that is below this noise level. You don't need to hit, you don't need to, finish, to you know, to start recording when the audio is below this level, maybe like 29. But by the time the audio, any the audio I'm trying to send in is actually more than, let's say, minus 8 decibel. So, immediately it gets any sound that is greater than that, please start recording. That is my own sound. Ignore the noise. That is basically, that's exactly what you are trying to do with this one. And I'm going to show you here. So, right now, I have this here. Let me try and... Um, Load up, yeah. We're still on my own, um, on our, our, our channel. So let me play something for you from here. 
as you can see, look at it's already it's waiting for signal, right? But when I hit play from here, you think you know all about the MPC of Push? Think again. Learn how to work smarter on these devices by doing less to achieve more. Kindly click here to subscribe to our channel. We dive deeper to bring you. Did you hear that? While it actually, you can see the signal is you know, from here. It's coming out. Okay, yeah, I'm getting something into this device, but nothing is happening. It's not recording. Why? Let's do that again. Watch closely what happens on this. You know all about the MPC of push. Think again. Learn how to work smarter on this device. As you can see, the threshold level. Let me clear this. You can you remember one of our videos. I told you how to how you can actually clear the signal level. Double tap. And then it's gone. You notice that the, the it's by doing less to it. Now this is the new level. This is the new. This is the highest level. The new one that has been set. It's less than the set threshold level that I set. So the Akka is considering all those ones noise and what I do not need. It will not start recording. If I want it to record, I need to take this down to a level where it is below that threshold level. That this it, 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 it has to be below the volume I'm sending in. That's when I'm able to say, okay, anything below this is noise, but anything above this, oh yes. Any signal you pick above this, that's basically the signal that I need. And that's what I want to work with. So if I put it now on minus nine and I start and I continue again, you notice that it's not recording, but when I, once I continue now. If more, kindly click here to subscribe to our channel. We dive deeper to bring you usage and production tips bit by bit. Only available on Bitbender Studio. Can you see that? Now, when I hit, uh, no, let's just discard. Do you see what just happened now? So when I reduce that threshold level to a place where, you know what, well, this is where I want to start working from, that is when it was able to actually pick and the recording started automatically. So we're talking about how you can get the best input, you know, as clean as possible. Always ensure that the volume of your own, uh, where you're sending it from is loud, you know it's loud enough and still clean then ensure that by the time you are sending it here the volume that way you will not have to crank up the volume of the gain of the device you are sending it you know if you are sending it directly to your account pc you are collecting it here that means you will not need to increase the you know the record volume which is at the back of your device to the highest to just be very minimal and then a good sound will come in the same thing once your audio is loud here you don't need to actually crank up the gain on your sound card it will not be at a reasonable level and a clean audio you know will come into your device into your device and that's basically what we're working on what we're looking at for your arming when you arm that particular device waiting for signal that signal has to be higher than the threshold level before that um that recording can automatically start you can manually choose to start it by yourself and all that but the best way to work around it is Know the audio, know, know the threshold, that is the, 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 a good level to start recording that will, that will boycott the noise in your environment first. And then that is basically what you are saying, okay, if the sound is higher than this, please start recording for me. And if it's lower than this, ignore, do not record. So that's basically what, what that, this particular uh, um, threshold level does for you. I'm sure you are familiar with the maximum length, which is straightforward. You want to set the length of your recording and say, okay, you know what, uh, maybe one minute, two minutes, or 19 minutes, things like that. Or we want, you know, it's based, the, the length you're going to give is dependent on the type of um, uh, projects you're working on. So, yeah, if you're working on maybe like you're trying to just take maybe keynotes, keyboard notes and all that, or samples, maybe five, five, five seconds and things like that, you can set it by simply just, you know, clicking and switching the knob and all that. So, you can set that then the same thing is applicable to here you can click and use your knob to turn it or if you double tap it becomes bigger and you can just move, use your hand to move it up and down and go back here so that's basically all about you know your sampling and how to take it in and you know walk around it uh, all these pad pad tap pad hold we're going to dive into it you know in um, subsequent videos i'll show you how best to use the pad tap and the pad hold and then how best to use your slice when you are recording then also right now where we're on sample i just want to we just need to quickly show you again because the last time we did this video there was nothing like um, you being able to connect your 
uh, external device, that's your sound card, to your archive. But now, I think it's kind of like a lot easier to do. And that's why you have your, you can easily connect to your, you know, to your sound card and have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, up to like 32 that you can route and work with. That is where you are doing your mixing and all that. So, yeah, that'll be all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.